My name is uh, Brother Adrian, and I work in hospital ministry in Cork. And I'd like to, to share a few thoughts today on St. Clair, uh, the companion of St. Francis and founder of the Poor Clare Sisters. You know, among the paintings by the 17th century Flemish artist, Peter Paul Rubens, there is a painting called The Defenders of the Eucharist. And in that painting, it shows four great male doctors of the church, Saints Leo and Gregory and Ambrose and Augustine. And they are depicted listening attentively as St. Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican friar, preaches with one hand raised high to give emphasis to his words and drive home some message of the gospel. But you might notice that in the very center of the picture is the figure of a nun holding a pyx or a monstrance containing the sacred host. And that nun is St. Clare of Assisi. I find this painting intriguing, but not only is it interesting, it conveys, I believe, a message, a teaching that is particularly relevant for us today. It, it teaches us about the, the place that the word of God and the Eucharist should have in our lives. Both St. Clare and St. Francis were overwhelmed by the mystery of Christ. Their deep and personal faith in the abiding presence of Jesus in their lives was passed on to them by the preaching and the teaching of the church. For St. Clare and St. Francis, the church was a privileged place for meeting Christ. And the greater their awareness of this grew, the more was developed in them a greater reverence for the mystery of Christ's presence in the church. You know, in one of the documents of the Second Vatican Council, we read the following words. Christ is always present in his church, especially in her liturgical celebrations. Christ is present when the church, the people of God, gather together to pray and to sing. Christ is present in his word, the Council Fathers say, since when the scriptures are proclaimed, it is Christ himself who speaks to us. And Christ is present par excellence in the Eucharist. Those were the words of the Council Fathers, the Second Vatican Council. But Saints Clare and Francis intuited those words and that thinking 800 years ago. They not only intuited it, they believed it with all their hearts. And more than that, they lived out their lives on this conviction of the presence of Christ in the world, the presence of Christ in the church, the presence of Christ in the word of God, the scriptures, and in the Eucharist. At a time when in the church, the time of Francis and Clare, the laity in a special way were not being well served by the clergy in the teaching and the preaching of the word of God, St. Francis, whose entire life from the first moment of his conversion was based on the gospel of Jesus, he had developed a profound understanding and appreciation of the word of God and of the Eucharist and the central role that these two mysteries should have in the lives of all Christian people. You see, the word of God for St. Francis was spirit and life. And his own appreciation and respect for God's word extended even to the very pages that the word of God was written on, so much so that in one of his letters to the friars, he exhorted them that wherever they found pieces of the scripture laying about in some place that it should not be, that they should gather up these precious words of God and venerate them as much as they are, were able. For St. Clare too, Christ was present for her and for her sisters when she and the sisters prayed the divine office, prayed the liturgy of the hours and went to mass in their monastery of San Damiano. The divine office was prayed and 
sung by St. Clair and the sisters in the chapel there, as it continues to be prayed faithfully day and night by all the poor Clare sisters in their monasteries today. And at the very heart of their prayer is the word of God, Christ's teaching of the scriptures. For the sisters today and for all of us, Christian men and women, our faith finds its nourishment from the same word of God in which Christ continues to be present and from which Christ speaks to us as he did to St. Clair and to her sisters in their time. St. Clair really tasted with, the, with delight the word of God. The homily or the sermon at mass sometimes called the breaking of the word of God, was a source of great joy and comfort and challenge for St. Clair. God's word formed and shaped her life and the life of her sisters when she heard the preaching of the gospel. It nourished their spirits. And that is why St. Clair was so concerned to have the word of God preached to her often by good, devout, and learned preachers. You know that during her life, Pope Gregory IX on one occasion decided to forbid the friars, the Franciscan friars, to enter the monasteries of the poor ladies, the poor clares, and preach to them. And when Clare heard of this rule of the Pope, she was furious. And it seems she threatened to go on hunger strike if the Pope did not change his mind and allow the friars into the monasteries to preach once again to the sisters, to break the word of God for them so that they would be nourished. Needless to say, the Pope changed his mind, especially when Claire threatened that if she was not to receive the preaching of the friars, she would also refuse the food and the alms that they would bring to the sisters for their sustenance and nourishment. So my friends, this leads us, I believe, to some questions that it would, it would be worth our while to consider. What is our attitude to the word of God? What is our attitude to the Eucharist? Do we, for example, allow the word of God, allow the sacred scriptures to nourish, inspire and challenge us in our daily lives by listening to it often or by reading it? Do we use the scriptures, the word of God, and reflect on it in our prayer, listen to it attentively when the readings are read at mass, and allow Christ to speak to us through his word? And what about our preparation for, our celebration of, and our devotion and reverence toward the Eucharist? Could we deepen our reverence for the Eucharist even more? Sisters and brothers, through the intercession of St. Francis and St. Clair, may each of us renew our appreciation of God's word and of the Eucharist so that we ourselves might truly be people of the word and Eucharist and be prepared to bring the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ to others. Thank you for listening.